Hello guys, my name is Keanu and I'm back inside or out. This is the question of the day. Who is going to win? Gumiho from Korea or Reiner from Italy? I'm very excited for this uh, pro match of StarCraft 2. As usual, I'm seeing it for the first time and together we are going to have a lot of fun. It's like a half an hour uh, long game, so expect a lot of uh, back and forth. A lot of non-stop action as usual. At the beginning we have standard opening, Raynor sending the Overlord to scout, while here we have a barracks and a wall off with a supply depot. Both players are extremely good. Raynor uh, it's uh, one of the best in terms of uh, Zerg that Europe can have, except Serral who is the undisputed king, while uh, Gumiho is one of the best Korean Terran where can be. We are both young, energetic, and I'm pretty sure they are not going to disappoint us. Like, come on, half an hour? It must be awesome. Also, a lot of uh, minerals on this map. Probably we are going to split it in two. Like, this part is going to belong to Rain or this part to Gumiho. And we are going to attack each other. Counter attack. Attack in the same time. Probably we are going to have some dropships. We are going to find out. A second command center for uh, Gumiho and a second hatchery for Raynor. Standard opening so far. And the spawning pool is ready. A queen already has started and probably we are going to see some zerlings to have a little bit of map control and awareness. While well, two marines are already trained. Where are you going? In the direction of the Overlord. Overlord should uh, better go somewhere else. He's not going to be safe in a couple of seconds. A raffinery, the second one. Gas is extremely important. The more gas you have, uh, the better your chances to have uh, better units, to have upgrades. And the two Zerlings are heading Waiting for their bodies. Hey bodies, wait for me. Two marines versus four zerlings. Yeah, four uh, marines versus four zerlings is never a good uh, <laughs> time to be a zerling. Four zerlings versus two marines. Eh. So already we have six uh, marines and another dead zerling. In terms of resources, already the Terran has a small, small, tiny advantage. These are the three Zerlings, 25 uh, minerals for each, 75 in total. This one is going the opposite side to scout. Already two Halians from the factory in order to in production. We have the stat port. So already action. Oh, a queen was killed. But both marines are dead. So four marines, 200 minerals for a queen, 150. Not bad. So in terms of resources, 300, 300. It's even. The power of the Zerg, already the third hatchery has been acquired. And now we have multiple fronts to deal with. Here we have the Zerlings for a counterattack and the Queens trying to spread the creep and to defend the homeland. The Zerg homeland. The Overlord spotting exactly what is happening. This is the point of view that Raynor has of the map. And this is what uh, Gumiho sees. But luckily for us, we see everything. For Hellions, they are extremely good if they can go to the mineral lines. These Zerlings are going to do a little bit of economic damage. But luckily, Hellions are already here to save the day. The Queens. The crisp spread is uh, extremely well done. 
And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's like a train. A Hellion train. Are we going to achieve a lot? Not likely. We have to pull back. One of them is seriously injured. Ah, and the Banshee. The Banshee is going straight to the mineral lines. With cloaking activated. It's going to try to kill as many workers as possible. But we already have detection in the form of a spore crawler, so nothing the Banshee can do. In the meantime, Hellions are killing some of the Zerlings. Already see the difference. Raynor lost uh, twice the amount of resources, but it's okay, he can afford, he has three bases. Have we started some of the upgrades? Only now evolution chambers are being built. While for the Terran... Yeah, already. 1-1. One, one. This is attack, this is defense. Increasing the survivability of... Uh, survivability. <laughs> As you already noticed, I'm not a native English speaker. If I may say so. So, some of the words are more like uh, not 100% accurate but it's okay a wall off of supply depots and the Hellions just hanging around but it's not never ever a good uh, time to just stay and wait because the <laughs> the Zerg, especially Raynor, is going to overwhelm you uh, Raynor already has more workers, 66 versus uh, 58 the army are pretty similar. The huge advantage that Zerg has is map awareness. With the creep and also on creep, everything moves faster for the Zerg, especially the queens. Bailings. They are rolling, rolling. They keep rolling, destroying. The tank. The tank uh, provides uh, cover for the marines, so in case Zerg tries to destroy these rocks, to open another avenue pathway, the tank is uh, going to prevent it. And now the action is going to hit it up. This group of marines are going to try their best to keep the creep. And luckily for them, two medivacs to safely take them away. Well, dropped over here to destroy, deny some of the cre uh, impo <laughs> impossible. But you saw the tank co covering them. The scans are not uh, free. Yes, they are free, but uh, you are using the energy that otherwise you could have used to have a mule, another wall off. So Gumiho is playing extremely defensive. He's preparing for the long game that is going to be. But he doesn't know this yet. We know because it's like half an hour. Oh, excellent. Some of the bailings connected. And while this is happening, a counter-attack. Yeah, you build the wall over here, but here you are exposed. But it's easier to protect if you have to protect only one side. These uh, hellbats are extremely good in soaking some of the damage. Now, from a distance the tank can destroy, but from close up, he's a uh, sitting duck. A lot of bailings. Probably Raynor is going to run them directly into the Gumiho defense. And while this is happening, we have a counter attack. Gumiho really needs to make sure to, creep the, to keep the creep uh, further away from his base. And now the tank is in danger and they are rolling. Yes, yeah, smashing through the defense of the Terran. Destroying as much as possible. This tank is dead already. 
overall uh, not very efficient trade look at the resources twice in terms of uh, resources for uh, Raynor but he can afford like one two three four five bases against one two three and a four that was recently acquired the mules were dropped that I told you about and Raynor keeping half of his forces uh, on the right the rest on the left and here we see this circle is because uh, here we have this sensor tower that gives vision to the Terran these units are dead and another hatcher is being planted the widow mine six kills not bad widow mines are extremely efficient because they can act as uh, scout they can see where uh, your enemy is coming and also the mine itself can blow a lot of zerlings non-stop action with medivax are they going to the main base? nope they change their mind so on the right we have the zerlings are very fast together with balings they can deny the marines extremely easily the sensor tower precisely put to cover this part of the map maybe another one here are we going to go to this base? no, yes the steam pack was activated, take some of the energy They were a real uh, Terran unit, just a decoy that overseers can uh, deploy like fake marines and you send them uh, to your opponent base to find out what is happening without losing any of your zerlings. In terms of workers, Raynor <laughs> getting extremely greedy, 97 versus 77. Both players are maxed out, just waiting for the right moment to do economical damage so far the map is split in two but we are running out of resources in their main base so this base and this base are going to be extremely important if Raynor is able to capitalize and have this base as well he is going to do just fine in terms of resources because overall he is losing way more than Gumiho and now a big counter attack not dealing too much damage what just happened? a suicide marine trying to take on its own wow that was a nice uh, detonation a second sensor tower providing cover for this area and now an idle swarm is it going to be ready in time or is it just a distraction no just a distraction you also see here we have a ghost the ghosts are extremely good they have the ability called snipe and the vipers the ability to yonk basically they are uh, extremely useful because you put tanks in the second line of defense where they can do a lot of splash damage but the vipers deny this uh, just by bringing them in front making them vulnerable run, run forest, too late with three medivacs, just wait for an opening, but creep is everywhere. The zerg is everywhere. You go on the right, you have zerglings. You go on the left, you have zerglings and bailings. Scanning to see everything. See? He now sees everything. And now this bunch of marines are being rescued 
lot of resources for Raynor, so he can afford to lose several armies. Not running out of money. The tank was killed. Maybe Raynor tries to get rid of some of the supplies. Tries again with the Night to Swarm. These are like the SWAT medivacs, bringing uh, wherever it's needed. Fifteen thousand uh, resources versus uh, seven thousand sixteen already. So throwing a lot of units, but Kumiho is too good for this. He immediately is able to do a strategic retreat. Now command center probably is going to be transformed into planetary fortress. Excellent connection. So what uh, Gumiho just did, made sure to kill some of the bailings and then immediately evacuated. And apparently there was some lag problem. Go, 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 3, 2, 1. A lot of upgrades, upgrades for weapons and now a big confrontation. Now Raynor decided to go back. Here we have the planetary fort, is the wall off. It's very hard. <laughs> really, Raynor? Trying to take this space? You think Gumiho is going to allow you? Well, he can try. If he is able to get this uh, base, he's going to have way, way, way too many resources. And as you can see, Gumiho is running out of them. And this uh, base, you already have 20, uh, 12,000 uh, minerals. A lot of ghosts. Zerlings, uh, luckily for Rainier, does not uh, require too much gas. Zero, in fact. But the bailings do. So it's also a resource uh, that we need to keep an eye on. The coins are here, trying to spread the kill creep as much as possible. Snipes everywhere. How many kills? One kill for this sniper. And Raynor! Yeah. Another snipe. So Gumiho really needs to deny this base. Yeah, Reino just uh, tried to limit uh, the damage by cancelling. And now we have a new command center that is going to be transformed into an orbital, into a fortress. <laughs> and another one taking this base. So both players are trying their best to take the same areas. Here we have a Liberator to protect it. A lot of scans to see exactly where the Zerg units are. And immediately they are here. They need some anti-air. This base was denied. It's now in fully control of Gumio. A lot of mules were dropped. Immediately the income is increasing. Now it's not that a big difference as it used to be. 6,000 versus 13,000. The creep uh, denied the command center ability to land. All the workers are just staying. And now we have one, two, three spore crawlers. Four with this one. And while this is happening, a lot of crypt tumors. How many ghosts? At least 10. 
A run by was tried. Finally. <laughs> so strange to see an attack happening with uh, spore crawlers. And finally, higher tier unit, uh, Broodlord. The ghosts are in uh, stealth mode. So you actually cannot see them. This is why you have the overseers all coming. But if you snipe them, the infestor are also here, the infestors. And is Raynor going to be able to break Terran defense? In terms of army size, uh, Gumiho has an advantage. But this is something to be seen. The huge advantage of Broodlords is uh, the distance, the sheer distance from where they can attack. The problem is they are not very, very fast. So if you scan, you know exactly where they are. This is free damage, what is happening right now. Broodlings uh, don't cost anything. And they continue to throw them. But snipes are very efficient. Nine kills. On this sniper. 12 kills on the other one. So basically you are trying to use your bane links to kill the ground units that can attack air. You have the corruptors to take care of the vikings. Sniping everywhere. Yeah. Oh, a lot of workers. So now in terms of worker 41 versus 72. Awesome battle. I like it. I hope you like it as well. So Raynor was able to deny from Gumio this base. While he is acquiring this base. From the upper left top corner. A lot of static defense is being added. This command center is like, hey, what are you doing? This is my base. Six kills on the tor. And now surround. The tor is dead. And all the workers. Only 21 workers is never a good idea. Because this bank 2000 is not enough. While Raynor can easily rebuild its army. The Brute Lords are continuing to harass. With Broodlings. For Liberators. Were like uh, aerial siege uh, tanks, are not very efficient in a straight uh, air to air combat battle, but they are very efficient against ground units. Anything that goes here, this uh, kill zone. There are way too many brute lords. Forty-three thousand resources for Raynor versus twenty-eight for Gumio. And this is a methodical approach. And why this is happening? The Terran is also attacking, knowing that uh, the major armada for Zerg is in the opposite direction. So this base is killed, but it's almost out of minerals. This base is uh, the only one for uh, Raynor that actually supplies minerals. And uh, this one but has only a few patches remaining. And for uh, Gumio, we have only here. Dropping a lot of mules, his income is going to rise sharply. See, from 100 minerals to 100 immediately. 
plus 1,600-700. While Raynor spent almost all of his bank, he has only 3,000 left. Now attacking the main uh, base of Gumio. Trying to reacquire this base over here, but Gumiho is denying it. I would just love the how Thor looks like. This massive mechanical giants. I believe they were the source of inspiration for Avatar mech soldiers. I don't know if you have seen the movie, but they look pretty much the same. Also in the Matrix, in Zion they have something similar. And these spore crawlers are going to give for protection against aerial units. Look how they move forward. Here is a good base to attack. Luckily the Terran units uh, can lift up uh, structures and just go away. So you're going to attack me? I'm going. We have here the overseers to see the ghost. There are a lot of ghosts available. We can go into stealth mode. And is Gumiho able to survive this onslaught? In terms of minerals, they are both equal now. An intense match. The ghost, are they going to be able to snipe? This overseer is preventing them from getting closer. the final epic battle I hope of the game I don't know if they can continue the map is literally running out of resources and where is the problem for Gumiho in terms of resources the difference is not uh, that much anymore and we have here the ultra Lisk. we are hungry hungry beasts and Raynor is the winner Excellent game, thank you for watching and see you next time.